Welcome everybody back to a, another edition of our Sports Safety Week, July 12th through the 16th, 2021. Uh, today's focus will be on emergency action plans and on athletic health care coverage. Starting today, I'd like to share this uh, screen with you. Uh, this is Act 1214 of 2011. And if we look here at line 27, the law says that a school district shall develop procedures concerning student physical activity in its public schools that includes without limitation, the recognition and management of the following events or conditions that may be encountered by a student during athletic training or physical activities, a concussion, dehydration, other health emergencies, an environmental issue that threatens the health or safety of students and communicable diseases. And this is where we get uh, the charge as school districts and member schools create an emergency action plan. And today I have two guests with us that I'd like to introduce and we'll be hearing from both of them. Uh, the first is uh, Keith Shireman, athletic trainer at Batesville. He's been certified for 23 years been at Batesville for 14 years. He's an at-large delegate of the Arkansas Athletic Trainers Association Executive Board Member. And also we have Jeremy Brazil, who is the president of the Arkansas Athletic Trainers Association. So we look forward to hearing from you gentlemen today about this very important subject. And we'll start off by uh, Keith. We'll let you talk to us about emergency action plans and how you apply that at the Batesville School District. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to speak uh, on, on this subject. This has been a subject near and dear to my heart uh, for many years since I've been here. Uh, uh, our uh, emergency action plan uh, developed actually prior to our uh, sudden cardiac event that we had on campus here, here back in 2014. Uh, we had two cardiac events in a span of six months, which was un which has been unheard of at that time. Uh, uh, in, in Arkansas and in Texas and the surrounding states as well. But uh, well, we had an uh, emergency action plan in place. Uh, it, it worked well. We practiced, it e we practiced this each and every year before the school year with all of our coaches to make sure everybody understands their job, their role uh, when we take care of these kids. I mean, these are not just, uh, these are not just kids that, pa that we pass uh, each and every day. These are my kids. I treat each and every one of these kids just like they're my own son or my own daughter. I want the best for them as well. So let me just kind of start off with a little bit of an introduction. Uh, uh, the components of your EAP, uh, your EAP, you may, uh, some coaches may uh, try to understand uh, what all is involved in an EAP. Well, there is uh, the emergency personnel you can, you can take a look at. Uh, there's the communication the equipment involved, uh, the role of whoever is the first responder, whether it be the athletic trainer or if the athletic trainer is not present at the school, uh, if, he's off, if he or she is off campus, then uh, you know, the athletic director or the head coach uh, would be uh, take over that first responder type role. Uh, there are maps uh, of each uh, of campuses. We have an EAP for uh, the football field, which we also have soccer out there. We also have track out there. So there's that EAP encompasses everything that happens on, on that field. Uh, we have a, uh, an EAP for the weight room and mo most coaches may not think about that, but it may be separate, a separate facility from the building. There's another one there. Uh, we have our baseball and softball complexes, which are not on campus. They are shared uh, with the city north of town. So we have an EAP for, for that facility as well. Uh, our cross country teams have practices here on campus, but the course that they actually have competitions on and meets on is east of town. So we have an EAP for that as well. Uh, and let me add also with each and every one of these, uh, these components, we have uh, uh, an AED at each site. Each coach is responsible for that. If I'm here on campus covering uh, football and volleyball is going on at the gym. There's a, there's a, there is an AED at the gym. Uh, that's a, an exceptional component that needs to be as part of, part of this EAP as well. But there's also, a, uh, finally, there's also a checklist that you need to have uh, in place uh, when you have an EAP. Uh, it's not so much as just 
having all these things all in one basket, but you've got to have a checklist and this checklist has to be gone over each and every school year. Uh, and, and in a fact, as a matter of fact, we don't just do it once a year, we'll do it twice a year. I'll do it with the fall coaches in the fall. And I'll also do it with the coaches uh, in the spring too, for the spring sports to make sure that they understand uh, the components of this and make sure that, 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 uh, that everything's in place, that they understand what to do instead of not, under, not knowing what to do at that point. So uh, let me just kind of go on your emergency personnel. Uh, you know, for our, it's not just myself. Uh, I have listed on our EAP, uh, we have my phone number, uh, my cell number, the AD cell number, and the head coach's uh, cell number. Uh, again, if for some reason I am not available, then the AD is available to, to take care of that situation as well. There's going to be instances where the athletic trainer may be off campus covering another sport, maybe on the road with a specific team. And if there's a practice and something else going on, then there's always, there's always someone uh, who can take care of that situation. Uh, we, we take pride in making sure that, that the, this EAP, not just the preparedness of it, making sure our coaches are AED, CPR, uh, and, and first aid uh, trained, make sure that they all understand what's at stake here. Again, and again, I, I, I have to emphasize that these are not just kids that come in and out that we don't ever see again. We still see these kids on a regular basis, even after they graduate. So they're still uh, just like my kids or your, or, you know, my son or, or my daughter. I'm going to treat the same way. Uh, communication. Communication has got to be key. You've got to be able to uh, uh, talk with each and every one of your coaches, and this involves uh, that even if there is not an athletic trainer present at that school, if the school has, does not, has not employed one, that it's up to the athletic director to communicate with each and every coach and to make sure that everything is in place. Uh, this is not a joke. This is not just something that we just kind of have to go through the motions. This is something very, very important that we, that we preach to our coaches each and every day uh, when, we, when we discuss this. Uh, uh, your equipment that, that's available. Uh, the athletic trainer, of course, is going to have all this, uh, everything that we're uncovering here is going to have everything taken care of. But again, what if they're not available? What if, the, what if there's a coach uh, who has a, maybe an early morning practice or a late evening practice that someone that's not available? Uh, where, is, where is the equipment located at? Where is everything at? That's, why, that's where these maps come, come into play. Where's the AED located at? Uh, where are the splints located at if, if we have an injury that happens, uh, you know, that, at, that, that early morning, that evening, you know. Uh, those things are, and, and to practice with those, uh, like, for example, uh, splints, uh, spine boards. We go over spine boarding before every football season, and we, I make sure the coaches do it, not just show them, but they have to do it. They have to participate in this. It's very, very important. In order to understand these things, you have to practice it. it. It's with anything in life. You have to practice, practice, practice. We're playing, we, you know, our coaches are teaching these kids and coaching them to do these specific sports. And they're having to practice, practice every day to get better at their sport. It's the same thing uh, when, when we're talking about an EAP and how to use the, these components of the EAP. Uh, your role as far as a first responder, is to make, uh, we make sure that all, again, we make sure all of our coaches are AED, uh, CPR, first aid certified, make sure that they understand how to, how to uh, take care of an injury, uh, you know, in the, turn, in, the, in the sense that if an athletic trainer is not available, uh, if they're at a tournament, if they're somewhere on the road, you know, in an athletic trainer's home, then they can give, it, give that athletic trainer a call and say, hey, I've got this, this uh, injury that happened. Uh, let me just say, for example, I had one, one yesterday. I had a basketball, basketball head coach was at a camp, basketball camp about an hour from here. He says, hey, I've got a young man that just got hurt. I need you to take a look at him. I said, bring him as soon as you guys get here, let me know. We went over his, uh, uh, his kind of sign and symptoms, what's going on with his injury. Uh, there was not an athletic trainer available uh, to them at that, at that camp. So it's my job to take care of that young man and to make sure that when he gets here, that I already have all the information available to get him taken care of. So communication is key. Uh, again, and, in, and as far as being a first responder, that you know, we I walk through everything with that coach to make sure that he was taken care of properly before he got on the road, got on the bus, and came uh, back here to Batesville to be able to see me. 
the last thing, uh, well, one more thing on this, is, uh, again, maps. We can, we can look at, let me see if I can pull up, let me pull up this, uh, let me share this page for just a moment. Uh, let me pull up this uh, EAP from uh, Dawson High School in Texas. Uh, there we go. They will have, let me show you, and here's an example here. Here's an example of their map. You can see right there uh, of their campus. Uh, they'll have, you'll see the football stadium. You'll have where the high school is, the baseball complex, the soccer complex, tennis, uh, tennis field. There's practice fields right there as well. Uh, you can, you see a field where, where the band may practice as well. Uh, there are other things uh, on campus. There's a softball complex you can see down here as well. So it's important to have a map uh, of, of where the AEDs are at. Make sure uh, there's access. We have uh, what I did a few years ago. I made uh, 12 different copies of our EAP and had uh, the school campuses. I had uh, the EAPs, had everything listed in there. Uh, for our EMS group here in the county. There are 12 trucks available in the county. So when they, if they are called to come here uh, to, the camp, to the high school or, or to this specific complex uh, of where there's an injury at for an, that, where that athlete is at, then they will know exactly where to go. They have the exact classroom. If I know where the, if an athlete is in the gym somewhere and he's injured, he or she is injured, I want to be able to tell them they have directions. They have the street directions. Uh, on this also is there are phone numbers, again, for myself, the AD, the coaches. Uh, I even have uh, uh, phone numbers for the local police department and the sheriff's department as well, if those are needed, if something is, if those are needed at that time. So uh, this checklist uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning, we have a, I have a checklist that we go over with all of our coaches. Let me stop the share here. Okay, we have a, uh, a checklist that we go over and it's also for non-medical emergencies uh, uh, that, that, we, that we discuss and make sure our coaches understand how to use each and every item that's on this checklist. Uh, make sure that the equipment that's, uh, that's available there that they can understand how to use those as well. So, and all of this information is available uh, on the Corey Stringer Institute website. Uh, they have actually a, uh, a uh, just an overview of, of the case. That's just a sample uh, of, the, of a EAP. Now, my EAP may be different from Cabot High School. Uh, Kat, Jason's at uh, Kate's uh, uh, EAP at there may be different from another school. It's going to be specific to the venue uh, that that they're at. Amen. That, that's very good, and I like the the aspect of of practicing. Go over that again. How often do you, do you practice uh, uh, the emergency action plans uh, with your with your staffs? Go over that one more time because that's a very important piece. Yes, sir. It, it, it it's super important to me. It's not just that the athlete. All you know, I don't I don't want coaches to have the to just think, oh, well, the athletic trainer's got it. He's going to take care of it. He or she's going to take care of it. Uh, you know, we don't have to worry about it. They do have to worry about it because let, let me give you an example here along with that again, but let me answer your question first is we practice before football season starts. So we'll be actually next week. We have our coaches clinic uh, that I go over with all of our coaches on all of our campuses. We'll go over it then. And then I'll, that, that's for all, all coaches, but I'll go over it again in the spring for our spring coaches. It's super important to go over that and to practice that. They have to get hands on. I want them to understand that. Let me, let me give you a quick example of that, Joey. When we had our uh, sudden cardiac episode back in 2014, I was called outside at the very beginning of practice uh, as I was getting my gear together to go outside. Uh, I had two athletes come tell me that an athlete had collapsed. Uh, go outside, you know, we've got yeah, uh, the AD, everything available. He's unconscious. I have to under, I have to uh, find out what's going on with him, uh, check his signs, symptoms. Uh, and then when I see that he's not breathing, I'll tell one coach, hey, you, you certain, you know, you specific coach, you call 911, you go unlock the gate, you uh, make sure that, that, that the ambulance has a, make that there's nothing blocking uh, the gates or anything to come in here. Uh, 
so that the uh, so that I can be, go ahead and begin CPR and have the AD out and just and go from there. Once all that stuff's taken care of, that's so important to make sure that all the coaches have a an active role in in this EAP. Mm -hmm. and, and and Keith, uh, talk about you know who would be in charge if an athletic trainer is not present. If it's uh, you know you're with softball and baseball somewhere else or soccer, uh, how does that work in your school district? Uh, a lot of uh, most of the times uh, it's that specific coach. If it's at you know, if, uh, if, if let's, let's say, let's just say, for example, baseball and softball, or they're uh, at, at our, at the facility north of town, and I'm on campus covering soccer, let's say that, uh, that baseball and softball coach is responsible for, uh, for taking care of that, of that specific situation. Now, I'm a phone call away, yes, and I do get phone calls about certain situations, but we'll try to handle it the best as we can. Over, uh, but also the AED, uh, excuse me, the AD, the athletic director, is typically at those games. Uh, if I if I'm present here, you know, he know he knows that I'll take, take care of every situation here while he's off campus, maybe at another event, or if it's out of or if the events are out of town, he's there and I'm here on campus. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I'd kind of like to review a little bit. Uh, just some items. I know you talked about KSI and, and this uh, particular uh, information came from summarizing their, their points on the uh, emergency preparedness. Uh, first of all, you got to have a specific one for all facilities, facility specific. Uh, next bullet, it should be developed and coordinated with your local EMS, school personnel and administration. Uh, very important to as you alluded to a while ago, Keith, with the maps, uh, maybe there's some construction going on at your campus. Maybe the entrances are closed because of that. Uh, we need to always update any current situations with our facilities with EMS in case they need to respond. Very important to distribute all the materials to all pertinent staff members that's gonna be involved. And again, specific for each venue. Uh, it's in Important to, as you alluded to as well, list the on-site equipment that may be needed in an emergency situation. Uh, identify personnel and their responsibilities. Have the appropriate contact information for your local EMS provider. And identify the actions uh, that should be taken post-emergency. Who's gonna call who? And uh, that communication piece that you alluded to. And uh, the next to last bullet, very important, we've emphasized this over and over today, it should be reviewed and rehearsed annually or biannually, just like anything else. If you don't practice it, when it comes game time, it's, it will not be as fluid as it should be. And then uh, have a list of the healthcare professionals who provide the medical coverage during your games and practices or other events that you might have. Those things should be included in that as well. Thank you very much, Keith. Anything else that you would like to add before we move on? No, sir. I, 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 just, I just hope that each and every high school works on this and practices it. I know that if your high school has an athletic trainer, you are working on your EAP. You're updating it, you know, every year. Uh, you're, you're practicing it with your coaches. Those schools that do not have an athletic trainer present uh, there on campus, uh, on your facilities, please work on this. Please make sure it, it, it will save lives in the long run. And it will, in the short and long run, it will save your athletes and save you a lot of time. It'll save those lives that are so important to us. You bet. I, I appreciate your timeline talking about next week, how you will get your staffs together and y'all will go through this together before we start uh, the fall season. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, our next guest uh, to spend a little time with today, because here in a little bit, we're going to hear uh, from the Greenland School District uh, about their athletic health care coverage. We have Jeremy Brazil with us and he is the president of the Arkansas Athletic Trainers Association. Jeremy, tell us a little about your organization and the benefits and how you can help our member schools. Absolutely, and Dr. Walters, I appreciate uh, the AAA's effort this week through the Sports Safety Week and, and getting this information out to uh, member institutions is very vital to, to educate everybody and so that we're all on the same page. Well, the Arkansas Athletic Trainers Association uh, Really, our primary mission is to support a very high standard for, for our members uh, 
for the athletic trainers in the state of Arkansas, as well as support member and in this event, um, stakeholder education for our member schools, uh, our coaches, our athletic directors, and uh, other stakeholders that are involved with this process. And, you know, we really want to serve as an, act, as an advocate for those who are physically active within the state of Arkansas. And by that, I mean, we want to protect and support and um, be available uh, for injuries, emergency situations and whatnot for those physically active populations. You know, our goals for the Arkansas Athletic Trainers Association in, in this event is really to protect our student athletes. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, in a perfect world, we'd love to have an athletic trainer at every high school in the state of Arkansas. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, our current rate is very low. Uh, it's approximately 33% of all high schools in the state of Arkansas have an athletic trainer. So we have a lot of high schools who um, our, our student athletes are uncovered um, or relying on coaches, unfortunately. And, and, you know, coaches are hired to coach, you know, and athletic trainers are hired to, to take care of student athletes. So um, one of our, our primary goals is to really support that effort and increase the awareness of the need for athletic <laughs> trainers. You know, there's a ton of valuable resources that I want to extend out to those watching this video. Uh, the National Athletic Trainers Association, which is our governing board, has a value model uh, for uh, superintendents, athletic directors, and uh, school boards that are, are interested in doing this. And some of these, uh, on this value model, um, you know, there's, there's some great information from a monetary standpoint. You know, what can athletic trainers do to... Um, help reduce costs for schools, as well as what are some other um, examples of, and I'll get to that here in a second, but uh, some other examples of some benefits that they can provide to a school district as well. Uh, you know, another great resource that we encourage all of our, our members to, to go through is, uh, it's called a program assessment for safety and sports, the PASS program. And it's an annual review of their policies and uh, documentation systems and whatnot to really give them a rating and see where are they more deficient at and where can they improve. So the past system is another great resource for any athletic trainers that may be watching this as well, or uh, superintendents or, or athletic directors who uh, may not be familiar with that. And then the last resource um, actually provides 12 standards for really providing appropriate health care. Um, it's called the Appropriate Medical Care Standards for organiza Organizations Sponsoring Athletic acti Activities for Secondary School Athletes. Uh, that's a mouthful. So, you know, the abbreviation is the AMCS. Um, and some of these standards actually go in and review case law um, and stuff that's been on the books, uh, former litigations. And it's really good to kind of look at that. It's a, it's a lengthy document, but it's really important to say, hey, where do we fall within this rank? And uh, so that's one system that we can look at. You know, I really just briefly want to summarize why an athletic trainer is, is valuable, and what's necessary. You know, there's really three components, student athletes, parents, and school districts. You know, for student athletes, athletic trainers actually help provide um, a decrease in absenteeism. Um, you know, if they can keep them on the field or keep them healthy as can be or treat them within uh, the system, you know, those kids miss less days going to physical therapy, going to rehab, going to physician appointments, whatever it may be. From a parent's component, you know, it helps keep parents away or uh, at work, you know, and, and keeps them away from missing too terribly much, too, too much work um, running these appointments. You know, it also decreased costs for parents uh, to provide services at the school uh, and not have to really rely on um, insurance costs and everything associated with some of these ex external appointments. For me, one of the biggest things and, and one I want to highlight for this is school districts. You know, obviously I mentioned reduced absenteeism for the student athletes, but it also benefits the school districts as well. You know, an athlete trainer can really enhance the safety and health care for these student athletes. Um, athletic trainers are very passionate about protecting their student athletes. Um, that's why most people go into a field like this and uh, unfortunately, we've all encountered something, and, and those young in the profession haven't yet, but at some point will, and so, which is why this is really important to us, the Sports Safety Week, um, having a, either a catastrophic incidents occur or a near incident occur 
Um, and that really hits home. I've encountered that several times within my career of 25 plus years, uh, but it's, uh, and it sticks, it sticks with you. And it, it really re-energizes the, um, the, the desire to um, provide the best possible care for our student athletes. So, um, and then the final thing, the final two, two points are, you know, this has the potential, the hiring of an athletic trainer has the potential to decrease insurance costs um, based on the standards that um, a preventive medicine that athletic trainers can provide. So school districts that, uh, that have to pay for their insurance costs, uh, their school policies, this has some po uh, policy holders um, actually will give a discount to school districts to employ an athletic trainer. So it's something to investigate. But one of the most important things I know superintendents, athletic directors, school boards want to hear um, is, there really, is really the decreased risk of litigation and liability associated with um, having an athletic trainer on board. Uh, it protects them a lot. So, um, you know, really for us, um, this is important. Uh, we want to be a resource to our school districts who may be considering an athletic trainer or unsure of how to go about it. There's several hospital groups around the state who employ athletic trainers uh, and send them to high schools. There are some different, we were really fortunate, Dr. Walters and I sat in on a call several months back with school, uh, schools around the state and uh, the Corey Stringer Institute or KSI and really brainstormed on some viable solutions to get athletic trainers in schools. There are some grant programs available nationally um, there's some other concepts that have been discussed, such as co-oping, where multiple school districts could hire an athletic trainer and share the cost associated with that. Uh, and then, as you'll hear with Greenland, um, the school district who found a way to employ their own athletic trainer as well. So with that being said, you know, I want to extend um, our association as a resource and primarily our executive board and myself for any school districts who might have a desire to go about this and just not sure how, uh, feel free to reach out um, and you can get my email from either Dr. Walters and I'll um, say it out loud. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything to blow up on the screen for you, but my email is Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y at 201, T as in Tom, R as in Randy, M as in Mary, Dot com. So it's Jeremy at 201TRM.com. If you have questions, by all means, feel free to reach out to me and uh, we can put you in touch with an athletic trainer within your region or area uh, that might be a, a good resource for you as well. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, taking the time today to, to visit with us about these two very important topics. And folks, again, if you have any questions or uh, need some help with resources for emergency action plans or for athletic training, uh, contact me and I can get you in touch with these folks and make sure we get your needs taken care of. Once again, gentlemen, thank you very much for taking time to uh, speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next portion of our presentation today is to highlight uh, an athletic trainer in Arkansas. We're pleased today to visit with uh, Taylor Bowker. Uh, Dr. Andrea Martin and Lee Larkin of Greenland. Glad you guys are with us today and, and happy for this opportunity to spotlight Taylor and all the benefits that she's able to give to the Greenland School District. Well, let's start off with Dr. Martin. Tell us about Greenland, the school district and the community, uh, your size, population, etc. Thanks, Joey. So uh, being in Pirate Nation, obviously we're a 3A school district just right outside of Fayetteville. So we're next to the, the large four school districts, but our district actually runs all the way to the tunnel to Winslow. So we do encompass quite a few miles. We have about 136 square miles within our district of about a hundred, you know, um, miles between traveling on our routes, but um, 750 students, um, Pretty much our class sizes range anywhere from 45 to 60. Graduating class this last year was 68. Um, so we're very rural when it comes to our population. We don't have a lot of diversity. We have a high socioeconomic status. We have 72% free reduced. Um, so we try to provide all the things that um, any child would have in any district in Arkansas. Um, even though we're a small rural district, um, we still pride ourselves on being able to do great things for kids. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, Taylor, tell us about yourself. 
uh, your family, where you grew up, where you went to school, college, etc. cetera? Um, so I'm actually from Texas. Um, I get a lot of crap for being from Texas, um, uh -huh. but um, I'm the middle child. Uh, my parents still live in Texas. Uh, I went to SMU for my undergrad in Dallas, and I worked with their football team for three years there, which is how I got my start in athletic training. Uh -huh. um, and then my boss there actually got me wanting to go to master's at Arkansas. And so I graduated there in 2019 with my master's in athletic training. And from there, I started at Greenland in July of 2019. Were you involved in sports or any clubs in, in high school or? I was actually not involved in high school sports. Um, I wasn't exactly the best. So I did the like peewee sports, stuff like that. Um, I was more in the academic stuff, but my family was huge on sports. Both my parents went to K-State. So we grew up going to K-State games, watching K-State games. We still go at, if we can. Uh, so that kind of got me interested. I was like, I really like medical stuff. And I thought I wanted to be a nurse. And then I actually really hated nursing school. <laughs> I was like, I can't do it. But this allows me to combine my love of sports and medicine. So that's, so that's what really what made you want to be an athletic trainer. Your love of sports and medicine and the relationships uh, that you can develop, huh? Yeah, I love being with around athletes and coaches like there's never a dull moment with them. And it's the best like every day there's something different. Well, uh, tell us about the, you teach any classes uh, there at Greenland. I do. I just started teaching sports medicine last year. Um, right. So that was a new transition for me was trying to figure out what works best to teach these kids because I've never taught before. So that was kind of fun. But it was a uh, it was a struggle there for a little bit. And then we figured it out. And I really enjoyed it, actually. You and I think so. eventually I'd want to maybe just switch over to just teaching if I have like a family or something. You, you bet. Now, uh, what, what's, uh, you know, some of the challenges of your job? I know there's, I know there's long hours and bus trips and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So uh, what, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face? Um, definitely work-life balance is really hard to maintain here. Cause I mean, there's always something going on sports wise. Um, but the benefit of a high school is most of the time we're not working as much weekend hours as we are in like a college. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely work-life balance is huge. Um, those bus trips definitely are not fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's been long hours on the bus. Um, definitely that and a, some other challenges um, like education for people. Um, when I got here, not a lot of people knew what I was, what I did, all that kind of stuff. So just educating kids and parents and faculty around to what I do and all that kind of stuff. I bet a lot of the education piece too, the benefit is is being able to educate your coaches and, and volunteers that work with the teams because you can't always be everywhere. Like in the spring, there may be a softball, baseball uh, track going on. And, and so you need to make sure that if you're not there, that folks are prepared as well, correct? Yes, it is. A, I can't be, there's only one of me, so I can't be in yeah. every place at all times. So letting the coaches know, okay, so this is what you need to do if I'm not there, or this is what happens when I am there. And a lot of communication is the main thing between okay. me, coaches, and athletes. Coach Larkin, I've known you for, for, a, long, for a long time, and uh, I know you uh, have done a great job at Greenland and, and been there uh, as a mentor for, for many folks and many successful seasons. Uh, so give me your input on, on the benefits. Uh, you know, you went through many years without having an athletic trainer. Give me the benefits of, as a coach, as an athletic director, of having your own athletic trainer at your school. It takes the pressure off the coaches. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to win. There's a lot of pressure uh, to have successful teams. So, you know, injuries, we, we are trained, you know, most of the coaches have one or two classes in athletic training. That does not prepare you to handle what goes on. And people look at you like you do know what's going on. And, and we have very limited training. So uh, actually what pushed us towards this is a meeting, a AAA meeting in, in, in the spring. And a lot of the stuff with heat and all that going on, uh, Dr. Martin and I discussed and decided that's something we need to do because it takes the pressure off the coach to make the decisions. You know, if it's too hot, she tells us it's too hot. If, if a kid gets heated, if a kid says he, he has a headache, whatever it is, we send him straight to her and what she says goes. We don't, there's no argument with her. She's the boss. It takes it all off us and it's been great for us. Not to, not to you know, even forget about the things like lost class time. Instead of going to the doctor at every little uh, bump and bruise, the kids uh, can go see her. And if she feels like they need to go to the doctor, she'll set something up. Uh, 
So those are probably two of the biggest th uh, benefits we've gotten. Yeah. And now, Dr. Martin, to, to you, of course, the big question always is how do you how do you fund these things? You know, uh, is it a grant, a partnership, local funds? Uh, you know, talk to us and, and other administrators about you know the budgeting process and, and how you came to be able to get an athletic trainer at your school. Sure. Well, as as Coach Larkin said, um, you know, anything that we feel is important for kids is worth doing. So in my opinion, it was it was worth looking at our local budget. We do not have any grants. We don't have any partnerships um, with any medical facilities. We basically funded 100 percent ourselves. So as I said, being a smaller rural school district, we're constantly playing that shell game with our finances, trying to be strategic how we can fund this and um, you know when we first laid this out to parents and our staff and our community our board was 100% for it they thought it was was incredible so it was it was a go from the beginning but as coach Larkin said the benefits are incredible and Taylor has done an incredible job um, we've we've tried to multitask her <laughs> yeah. um, but using her skills we got a permit a licensure permit for her to be able to teach those classes so not only the interest for our student athletes to maybe look at this field themselves and get experience in that as far as the classroom setting but as coach Larkin said um, being able to have confidence as a coach on the sidelines or on the court to know that Taylor is there um, and not have to stress about that was, was a big push for why we felt it was important in our budget. Um, I just allocated that as I would any teaching that I felt was important. And to me, this is almost, um, you know, number one priority for us for taking care of our kids, just as I would, you know, a nurse or a teacher. So, um, you know, we didn't hesitate at all when we felt like it was something we could do and, and we looked at our budget and we just made it happen. Um, so we continue to do that, and um, I, I don't think there's any hesitation, you know, as we continue to have moved forward, um, I wouldn't change it at, at all. In fact, um, we just need to clone Taylor. <laughs> uh, she, she really has been incredible, but the communication piece, I think, has been very important as a coach and a, and a staff member, um, knowing that confidence and knowing that they can go, you know, just she really is that liaison between the medical um, contacts, the parents. Um, a lot of times the stress as a parent is, who do I take my child to? What do I need to do? The protocols for releasing all of those back to play. Um, she handles all of our um, parent communication pieces, the paperworking, that dragonfly piece. Um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. she, um, she definitely, um, we snagged a good one when we snagged Taylor. Um, but definitely the budget was, you know, just something we felt like was important and that's what we decided to do. Um, so I would say to anybody out there, it, you can make it happen and um, you just have to change your mindset to looking at safety for athletes as um, incredibly as important as their academic um, importance, as their medical importance, as we would, like I said, as a nurse or a teacher. So um, we've just added her as a staff, just like we would have any other staff member. Fantastic. Anything else you'd like to add, Lee or Taylor, to, to this piece? Well, also with COVID the last year, you know, and return to play and all that mm -hmm. stuff, she was instrumental in all that and helping us navigate through COVID. We had a really successful year dealing with all that stuff. And, and without her, it would have been really tough. So she takes a lot of pressure. And the mention of her helping with Dragonfly is absolutely key. I mean, it's probably worth the money with her helping with Dragonfly. Yeah. But uh, she, she's done a really good job and I trust her 100%. When she says a kid can, go, can play, he, they play. When he says a kid, she says a kid uh, needs, to, needs to be looked at, that, that's it. There's no questions asked, that's, she's the boss. You bet, and, and I hear that trust piece quite a bit uh, with, with with medical coverage and athletic trainers. Uh, um, how, do, how do you develop that trust? Is it just over time, or uh, it, it appears to me, looking from the outside in, it's a really close knit group and and uh, really a lot of trust. So how does that develop over over time? I, I would say it's just watching her work. And, and, you know, I've been around long enough to understand some things about when people know what, what they're talking about. And she came with really good references of people I, I trusted. So mm -hmm. between that and, and understanding where she'd been, I, I, it started out with good trust. And then watching her work and watching her work with the kids, that just put it over the top. I think um, in my perspective, watching Taylor from a district perspective, you know, 
teaching and working with students, whether it's in the classroom or on the, on the playing field, is all about relationships and then communication as a whole. And I think Taylor's done a great job just um, not only as a staff member, but also those relationships with kids. Um, they have that same trust and confidence. And we heard initially from a lot of parents how thankful they were to have this as a go-to. Um, they just felt like we were making a really important decision for their child. And um, so that was confirmation as a whole, not only personally, selfishly as a staff, but when you feel like your parents and community is supportive of you because they know that without a doubt, they're taking, you know, we are taking the best care of their students. Um, and Taylor has done a great job with those relationships with, with kids. And I think that's how that trust happens, just building. Yeah. Being in a smaller school district, um, we're all family around here and I was really adopted super fast there was never like a oh it's just, we don't really know her she's kind of an outsider i mean i was adopted really fast and taken care of here and i really love it became part of that team pretty quick it appears that that's fantastic well thank you guys for spending the time with us today we wanted to put this at the end of our emergency action plan uh, presentation and if any schools out there have any questions, I know uh, Dr. Martin would be glad to, to visit with you guys and Coach Larkin and Taylor as well. So hopefully you guys have a great, successful school year, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.